Let's head into game number two. Cryptic, however, let the game just sort of fall out of their hands. They did, and they carried on doing the same things and trying to adjust mistakes they made in the last team fights. But the, mis the decisions they made to try and adjust the mistakes actually caused them more problems than actually helping them. Well, Cryptic's going to ban out the Osiris. Uh, I think this is a good decision. Just very uh, problematic in that early to mid stage that we were talking about. Really brings a lot of control. And I mean, from what we saw at Final K did with it, they don't want that against him. It's also because they can go for Kukulun themselves and not have to deal with an Osiris in the lane match if they want to take the Kukulun as first pick. And with how bans are right now, Kukulun is one of those that is generally left up sure. because Erlang Shen, RTO, things like that are getting banned instead. Well, the RTO is going to be banned out along with the Nemesis, which is uh, an interesting band. Like I said, she just covers too many bases for me. Uh, is she the most potent or the most powerful hyper carry in the game? Probably not. But the ability to pick Nemesis, not show your hand, and be ready for whatever the enemy deals, you pick a Naja, well, anti-crit hurts you, right? You, you, you pick a, a bleed character, other things hurt you. You pick a Nemesis, what hurts you? Tanky lineup? No. Soft no. lineup? No. No. Nope. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's true. So Scardi's going to get picked up. That's interesting to see Scardi being the first pick here, especially when someone like Erlang Shen is still available and he's been prioritized quite heavily when he's not got through the batting phase. Well, Cryptic's Hunter Vedium, one of the one of the forefront Scotty players. Scotty recently has just become this gotta pick her, she's way too good. Mm -hmm. Now before that, Vedium was still playing her and looked fantastic. And so with that in mind, I think that's why we see the Scott. Excuse you. Yeah, this is Scardi as well. Fafni and Erlang Shen locked in for SSG. Excuse me. The good thing about SSG, though, is they still have Ho Yi. Yeah. Like, the, I don't see Cryptic picking up Ho Yi as well here, which means, okay, so it's going to be Ho Yi for Zatman here. Yeah. Nice, easy jungle clear. SSG are very happy with the comp so far. Yeah, the Scotty pick is more to empower Vedium and less yeah. about taking things away. The Scotty recently has had a couple of changes, so she might not be considered that all in must have character anymore. But again, Vedium, he's not looking for that. He just really likes the Scotty character. And me, as an analyst, I really like Scotty on Vedium. I, I think it's a good idea to have the Scotty on our team, but I don't value it over Ho Yi for the early stages of the game. That's my personal <laughs> view on it. Although, Scotty's early clear isn't the worst either, just because she does have the pet in tow. It's the, it's the hunter v it's the individual hunter for sure. me right i think that, that I, I think that you know versus the ho yi we'll see but now with the red tasker pick you can ban him out that's true i mean to be fair that team's always been one of those players that has been more of a controlling hunter his yes. neath springs to mind immediately yep whereas you think of that you think of more aggression or well, you used to anyway but <laughs> he switches up quite a bit now the ratatoska I like it. I like to see Rat coming back into the meta now. I think the changes that we made have actually helped him out quite a bit in terms of his damage output and um, viability for competitive play. Captain Twig played him as a tank this weekend. Yeah. Uh, really just using it for the initiation. And Space Station Gaming, it's interesting because they went Thor. Ratatasker for me is sort of Thor too. Little differences, a little uh, min the, the minutia in the kits might vary a little bit here or there, but the idea, go up, come down, yep. start a fight. That's what homie did in game number one. That's what he's going to look to do here with the Ratatasker selection. Two Guardians banned out by Space Station Gaming, and there's that Ho-Yi ban. And Guardians, again, look, notice what SSG did. They pick up Fafnir, RTO is banned. They ban Ganesh and Sylvanas and go, okay, Cryptic, we're going to run. They have Sobek this time around, mm -hmm. which is more than likely going to be in that support role, but can flex elsewhere. And clearly, SSG feel that Sobek is so low because otherwise they wouldn't have banned Ganesh and Sylvanas. Those are two Zatman hunters. There you go. <laughs> the Jingwei and the Ho Yi both banned out by and Team that's Cryptic. I'm surprised by the Ratatoska pick and not a Ho Yi pick potentially here, unless they didn't want to give Ho Yi. You don't ban you know, Zatman out. No, sure, but you could have picked Ho Yi, and I, would, would they really have banned Ratatoska? I'm not so sure. It's possible. It's possible. Possible, I mean, yeah, but guarantee I don't know. Sure, but here's the thing for me. Uh, when it comes down to Thor and Ratatasker, they present specific strategies sure. uh, where you're going to look for that up in the air, come down, and really look to start the team fight. If you ban out Ratatasker and maybe even the Thor, then that strategy is gone. Whereas if you ban out Ho Yi and Jing Wei, a hunter is a hunter is a hunter. They have different styles in, in playability and when they come online the most, but Karninos is going to do generally the same job that Ho Yi does. Mm, that's very true. I do, I do get exactly what you mean with that. Sol for the mid lane more than likely here as well. Although Scotty could mid, Sol could duo lane. It's not something we've not seen before. And a Hercules, okay. That's a really good pick. Final case Hercules is fantastic. So is Scary D, although Arlong, Shen, and Ratatask are already selected. So he's not taking it out of, uh, or, or excuse me, uh, Scary D gets to play. I'm, I'm completely on the back line. But the idea that Hercules is going to be here um, is, is a really good look for Final K. And a Toth is the final pick for mid lane four. Good old Anster, who's made his good rotation to mid now. I think he's, he's up there it. with the best of the mid laners yes. now. He's took a long time to get there, in my opinion. But to be fair, it's going to take a lot of transitioning from the jungle position. And he's got the skill to do so. 
listen, yeah, I mean, at this at this point, if, you know, people people ask why do we keep talking about Andy being new to the mid lane? It's because in comparison to the rest of the players in the world, sure, he is relatively new. Sure. But I think we're past the judgmental point um, as to, you know, how good he is or this, that, or third. Andy, for my money, is just as strong as any other mages. It's not the comparison for me of him in the mid lane position versus other mid lanes. It's the comparison of him in the jungle, the jungle position versus him in the mid lane. Oh. Man. Gino, welcome to the Pro League, my friend. Uh, Zapman will take your life, and 400 gold to a Kernanos early on is not something that Vettian will be too happy about having to deal with going forward now. Yeah, not, not a good look to give Zapman a little bit of a boost up there, and Gino not going to be happy about it, can I? Cause the pause. Actually, it's Scary D that probably we're going to win. on this keyboard, you know? <laughs> Doesn't probably happen. Like, damn it, and hit the pause key. Yeah, Scary D just uh, a little too happy there. He celebrates so hard that he knocks out his internet. Well, going back to Anister, I mean, the thing about him is I know we've always been talking about him mid this season. Sure. It's because he was probably one of the best, if not the best, jungler in the world and was always considered that. Then changed position, and you're like, well, is he going to be the best in mid? Well, it's going to take time to ramp up to that, and he's starting to get there. See, the question for me, I, the question for me is, he's already there. I, I do not question if he's one of the good, one of the best mids. I, I, he's crushing it. Like I said, uh, for Space Station Gaming, their win cons are Andy and Zapman. Sure. Give him the Thoth guy and let him fire from afar in the late game. But I'll always have, and I've said this before, the, the what if. Whenever Space Station Gaming loses because of a questionable call or a questionable gank in the jungle, what if that was Andy? instead and I think if when space station game was created if it was anybody else outside of homie FA I would have said bad move sure but Anister leaving way for homie FA that is probably the only jungler that I would have been happy about this move at, made. at the time when he did that like when you look back you're like yeah there wasn't many others you're like okay that makes sense this was a year ago at this point right yeah, I mean yeah. if, you, if you look at the league now there's definitely a few more faces on that jungle list that you're like you know what that would work out okay now but at that time when this happened sure. like, yeah it was the only one yeah and, and and as far as you know that that will always be the conversation I, I he has he has done the the work he has become the mid lane he is mid lane and answer and nobody's questioning you know is he still growing blah 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 it's been a year the guy sure. is totally fine at the mid lane but like you said there's always going to be a little Good andy one. in the back line Good beads uses out of Andy too, because that would have been a lot of free pressure onto Anister to start him. Take into account he's only level two as well, which means he's not got his full kit necessarily available. Yeah. By level three, generally you may look for your whole kit, but sometimes you wait till level four even before you get your first three abilities online. Ain't waiting till four against a Sobek, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> the Sobek no shows choices. up. Yeah, no, I'm getting There's that. Worse, whenever you deal with a Sobek, it's always like, I guess I'm getting my escape ability second, not necessarily the one that's going to give me a little bit more pressure earlier on, because you've got to just be a little bit more aware. And I'm happy to. See see Gino throwing that out early. It's not something that sometimes Sobex will hold on to a lot more often. Sure. Just throwing it out early just keeps him in check the whole time then, because the whole game they're like, oh, Sobek puck, Sobek puck. So the position changes slightly. Yeah, it's, it's you got to condition the opposition yep. into you know being in a, in a spot that you can really take advantage of. It's also the punishment onto Aninsa as well, because he went for this Book of Toth rush at the start of the game. By him not having as much sustain in terms of potions in his kit because of this, mm -hmm. getting those beads off him early means he's going to play further back, knowing that if he gets poked out too much more, he's going to have to go back to base earlier and then he's not going to get his Book of Toths up online as quick. Instead, he's going to have to go for the boots. Yeah, but if he does get that Book of Toth online... Then you're having a golden situation to be a Toth. Yep, Space Station Gaming. They could 2-0 here, but Team Cryptic look really good, specifically in the early game last time around, which is why I like to see this draft oh, out of them. He's completely dead there. That is just going to be enough. He didn't really do to do much more than that. He just saw the poison. I'm like, well, he had beads. That ain't going to save you from the poison damage, which is true, on top of three other characters around. So once again, Cryptic doing good stuff outside of the first blood on Gino. They control the start of the game. How many of you might have been able to get out of there if he had more moving speed? That's true. Yeah. If only had boots. Why would you say that? Why? What? what? I was going to say. It. I was going to say maybe a winged blade. Listen, what winged blade at three minutes in the game? After no, I know where you were going. I just played along and then turned it on you. Where you're like, why would you do that? You just blown chat. I'm like, no, you did it. I just made you. You're accountable for that one. I, just I take through. no responsibility. I just followed through. I always follow through. I take no responsibility for that one. Y'all can direct your complaints at Hyrus Hindu Man on Twitter. That's fine. <laughs> I'm not upset by it. I'll take it on the gym. <laughs> but once again, like cryptic. 
just playing the early game well, in my opinion. Outside yeah. of that, you know, that first death where they got caught in the jungle, that'll be a small correction you make going forward where it shouldn't happen too often, unless Geno starts becoming the new age badger of North America. Eesh. Which, you know, if that's the case, they were still winning games, so why not, you know? <laughs> well, that's a throwback. <laughs> SK, SK used to lose every game at two minutes and 50 seconds yep. before the, the left side harpies respawned in the season one and two meta. We would see a dead support. Zapman in trouble here, but he's going to get helped out by the juggler. Oh, Beautiful knockup. Turn around, but the dot damage too strong. Vedium from the red. But Dishes one, one out. Oh, Gino's peel is great here, but Jigs is having none of that. And Domi's like, well, I still got Acorn Sunshine, even if I don't have boots. And now Jigs under pressure too, with Shadow Chair coming in. He dodged it. Ultimate. He dodged it. Completely he dodged missed. it again. Jigs completely avoided all of the damage, dodges three separate abilities, one of which the Supernova all-inclusive, and Jigs is just sitting there, VEL in his way to the bank. Beautiful juke boots coming out from Jigs on the Fafnir. We always talk about this guy being a mechanical god. He also has the jukes. You know, I hope Jigs isn't listening because he's got a big enough head already, but I love watching this guy play. I love the whole team fight as a whole, really. I think Sam Pasaka's <laughs> pressure onto Zatman early was a really good idea. Get Vetium almost back on an even keel because of, remember the first blood that Zatman picked mm -hmm. up? That helps out a lot. The difference is, is Zap realized that he was in trouble, but so did his team. Instead of running and trying to survive, he was like, okay, my team's coming. I'm probably dead here. Let's fight, knowing my team's on the way. And it turns it around into a two for one then. Turn and burn. Beautiful play from Space Station, but a lovely attempt from cryptic on the gank yeah you got you got to understand you know when you're in trouble and identify that <clears throat> but you know and talking about the early game prowess of cryptic they draft a composition that i love look at this both sides of the map opposing teams looking for a gank it's sammy on the right and it's jigs on the left jigs gonna back to base sammy probably just gonna absorb some of the farm i'm excited to see how well final k does on this hercules this game too as we get to the team fights we mentioned that both these two solo laners are very very good in the team fight scenario and I'd be interested to see how he's going to work out here because if he just gets to continue to farm in the solo lane and doesn't get pressured on this Hercules, Hercules is a bit of a monster towards the later stages yeah. of the game, especially because you're not necessarily going to buy anti-heal against this composition realistically, are you? Oh, you are for the Hercules. But you're going to have to for Herc. That's the Because he's so. also going to buy Bracer. And he's going to have a fun time. Do you reckon he's going to go Bracer? He did the last time and it was I stupid. Know. I don't know. He was one hit away from death and then yes. full HP. And That's just went into another team fight. Giggling away. Yeah, so the, I think by the time he gets oh, level that? 12. Good gag. Yeah, nice little, uh, nice little aggression there coming out from the guys on Cryptic. And th that, that's one of those. That's one of those where Team Cryptic, when the, when the cameraman misses the plays like that, that's indicative of Cryptic being that surprising. Oh, Sam in trouble in mid, though. He dived in again on Andinster. Who survives? And that's twice now. Sam's made a gank attempt. One, he got punished. He got punished for both, but at least he got a kill. The first time round, they've got to be a little yeah. bit more careful here because they've been biting off a little bit more than they can chew. If you've got a 2v1 on the left-hand side, guess what? You're probably in a 3v2 in mid. You probably should be trying to make plays there at the same time. Sam for Soccer also played alongside Zapman once once upon a time. Nice juke out by Shadow Chair. So Sam's pathing, Sam's style might be known by the big Z. And he might be able to tell everybody, hey, look out for Sam around this point in time. Because Sam for Soccer was a relative, uh, he, he was he was a rookie coming up for Eager once they lost their jungle DJ Pern. So he only played a handful of games. Sure. When you're on the amateur side, your repertoire of decent plays that you make is relatively small. Oh, scary, they're gonna get plucked here. Sam tries to cast the escape route side. Scary will get a tar off on three. And Andy's support is great with the damage over the top. Fine, okay, throws out the boulder generally to try and dissuade Space from continuing this zoning all pretty much zoning all as a, as a Hercules that's <laughs> kind of what it is really I mean it's either a kill secure or a zoning all or it's the dream of hitting four people or or the the wave clear uh, the Divios wave clear a, yeah that's the lazy man <laughs> the lazy man like oh I got pushed under tower because I was late to my lane <laughs> boulder boulder I guess I'll back now yeah so it, it it's works. there but go, going back to the uh, conversation you know Sam for soccer he doesn't have the whole you know, he has a couple of approaches to the game at this point. Sam's still new, like re relatively to the pro league, and he's still finding his foot in. Like we said, mentioned, he played a little bit on Eager for mm -hmm. a little while, and he didn't have enough time to really get grounded and work exactly. out the style of the team. Now, he's just joined this team, Cryptic, so finding his foot in again with these guys. Obviously played with him a little bit before sure. entering the pro league, but still finding his foot in, and the, the pace of the pro league is different to, ca to challenge him. Jinx going to get flung, and under the water goes Gino, looking for the damage on a scary D, who's able to get out of there. Final K won't. So many FA finds the last hit. On to the big man, 
And down goes Hercules for the first time in this game. Gino looking to play some sort of defense on the blue buff. Shows up, tail whip, and gets Doesn't all get out of there, but no, not able stunts. to secure. Oh, Andy missed a stun. Surprising to say that. Notice, though, that everybody on Cryptic was at the speed and blue buff. Notice that Space Station still took the speed and blue buff. And notice that Zapman was still free farming on the left-hand side. Mm -hmm. Win, win, win. Space Station game. Very different scenario than game number one. Space Station already of about 1,500. But the deal here that I liked about Cryptic, but it's not coming to fruition, it seemed like Cryptic identified the fact that they were ahead in the early and the mid game last time around and picked characters that do well in the early game, but can also transition to the late. Hercules, Soul, it's the it's and Sir Cat all do Ma that. Mainly the balance. I mean, Hercules' laning phase at the start isn't the absolute greatest. Kind of dips in the midpoint for a little bit, but then yeah. late game comes with the itemization. Boom, right? So having someone like Sam Fasaka, who's great in the early game on a Sir Cat, Sir Cat's fantastic. Fantastic all the way through. You've got Sol that's going to be very safe. Gino will be the one on the Sobek that's doing most of the setup for the kills exactly. in the early stages too. And you, you transition towards the later stages a lot better. Whereas Space Station, I'd say their curve is absolutely perfect. Sure. I mean, early game kind of lacking, but I mean, right now their early prowess is crushing. As we were saying, early game, like they lost early game last time. It doesn't matter as much until True. the second, third Gold Fury where it's actually critical. The early game isn't as big and impactful as you think, unless, unless you get the first two, the strangle on the first couple of Gold Furies. Right now, Scotty, I, I kind of thought Space Station would filter into this left side jungle. Instead, more concerned about the Harpies. Mm, Gonna actually, actually pick them up at least for the safety factor and Scary D and fine, okay. I love keeping an eye on solo lanes and their rotation and pathing choices of like, are they going to stay for the wave? Are they going to go proxy farm? We don't see as much proxy in these days as we used to, however. Nah. I'm wondering that's why to, because of teleport. Oh, the flip kick place. under the tower. That could be a big deal, folks. Good damage. Scary D gets hit by the ultimate as well. Not enough to kill, but certainly brings him down low. Take into account Scary D still got his ultimate too. So as long as he holds that, he actually nets a win there for getting final K's ult for free, especially if the no gold fury attempts happen now from Team Cryptic. Sure. I always view Hercules' as ultimate as, as one that you kind of want to, you know, have a quick finger on, have a quick trigger on. What, just to throw out there for damage? Or yeah, just, just go for it. It's not a big taunt, it's not a big heal. The impact it has in a team fight, sure, it's large. But like you were saying, I mean, it's not exactly one of these must-have team fight ults. In my eyes, though, as Hercules, like, I use the ultimate in team fights, and I'd look at it in ultimates of, like, hey, that will absorb a stun that I don't get hit by. Sure. Hey, that'll also absorb some extra damage coming out. For example, if Zatman drops the piggies in the team fight, Mitt turns everyone to boss, Hercules is going to stand there and throw a rock at his face. That's a good way. It's CC immunity. It's sure. the reason you would like to hold it for team fights. That's a big deal. That's definitely a big point. Final Piggies. K not going to have that opportunity. Neither will Sam for soccer, but Homie FA drops on down, separating the team fight. And Sammy falls down for the third time of this game. There's Good the block. block. Homie FA right in the clutches of Shadow Chair. But everybody else from Space Station is just waiting. Shadow Chair could be in trouble here, waiting for the z disapparation. And he's gone. Shadow Chair has to look back at that last team fight and decide what he wants to do because he took way too long about everything there, realistically. He wanted to help out a little bit on Sam for soccer, drops his ultimate, but it was too late. The fight was already washed. He was already dead. He turned it around, drops it anyway. Should have just backed away. Just got to think about these things a little bit quicker, especially at this level. Oh, Venium's in trouble. No dash on the character. Keep that in mind. Zap Man just tunneling. Gino's playing really well, by the way. I know he's only 1-1-2 now, but look at this. Pulls in, zap again. Stellar burst from Shadow Q, just slightly off the mark by a hair's width. But Gino's in the fights, yeah. mixing it up, peeling where he can, supporting his team, setting up. That's his really good, and for a, for a technically rookie. He is a rook to the Pro League. That's a good sign of a support. So we have seen him once or twice before uh, playing under Aruzis. If you remember, he played a handful of games for, I think they were United at the time. Um, last, whether it was last season or early this year. I don't know. Pendy Vance had so many different members on his <laughs> team. I couldn't tell you which one was when. No. But it was he has shown up a handful of games and he was playing in the jungle at that point, if I'm not mistaken. Very weird, different stuff and only for a game or two. Now in the support position, I'm with you. He looks he looks more comfortable. He looks very strong, oh, yeah. uh, and just as uh, Gino in some trouble, playing aggressive, able to dash away, stun onto a de onto. Castor's curse. Oh, oh no, no, the no juke. Castor's curse! Just sidesteps to the right, and Andy did not predict the size. To be fair, Toph's ultimate is one of the things, like, you can see it coming if it's that close too, when you're like, okay, I just sidestep to the left, and it's not as big as you think. I got really excited range. there. I got Me too. really excited. I didn't think he'd actually get the juke out, but he does. Andy being cheeky, sends the uh, stun through the wall. But yeah, it's fun watching Gino succeed here. Um, just a side note. <clears throat> you know where he's from? 
Is it? Is it? Somewhere Gino hails from Long Island, New York. Northeast, yeah. Long Island, New York. Oh. Just, uh, just saying. Why do you always? Why do you want to mention that? Oh, because Long Island has bred so many professional spike players. Who? Zapman is from Long Island. Is Baskin he? is from Long no Island. Way. Jeff Hinless from Long Island. No, he's Canadian. That's not even a funny joke. All of these players come from Long Island. We, there joking. are even more that I could go on. I but Gino, Canadian. the latest in the Long Island players representing the Spike Where, where are you from? Long Island, baby. Of course you are. That's <laughs> the only reason it gets brought up realistically. Not just because it, they're all from Long Island. It's because Tom's from Long outside, Island. Outside of the fact that I am from... I'm a dude of England all the time now. <laughs> sure, but even, even out the fact Where's that... Where's Rafa from? Rafa's from Manchester. No, he's not. I thought, was, I thought it was. Close, but not right. Ah, it's the city of England. England's easier. England's the same as Long Island in size. <laughs> It'll work out. It's about the same. And besides the fact that I'm from there, I do find it very interesting that there are so mm. many players from one spot. Only you do. <laughs> Only you do, Tom. But they're all, there's so many players from one spot. Sure. Is that because you've got no lives in Long Island? Is that the issue? So the best thing you can do is set a We're right next to the greatest city in the world. Free Gold Fury for <laughs> SSG. You said he's like, what for that? No <laughs> vision whatsoever. And Space Station pushing their lead even further. That's not a good play from Team Cryptic. Yeah, that's a small mistake from Cryptic, honestly. Like, they pressured the right-hand side, and that was mainly they wanted to secure their own buffs. I felt more than anything else. You can see speeds down for Sam Fisaka. So by sending that many people to make sure speeds defended this time, Space Station turned it around and go, okay, you can send that many there. Yep. Well, we'll take a gold then. Works out well. Yeesh. I can't... Cryptic need the vision there. They, that's... That's inexcusable. They're not so far behind that they can't fight into that. Yeah, it's, that's one of those communication things that you just get thrown for a loop for a second, like Betty and probably Basin at the same time. Sure. Not realizing he was going to be the only man over there. Oh, Zap's beads went very late. Very, very late beads. That's going to force his ult. Now the beads are on cooldown, which means Doggy comes in, but Good here ages. comes Jigs. Good Aegis. Now Jigs with the body block goes for the transformation. But now the Aegis is down. And not know if Jigs really wants to chase his because he doesn't know where the rest of the team are. Of Cryptic, but can you can just see the mini map? The rotation from Shadow Chair was coming, and so was Sam for soccer. Yep. But Zatman's Aegis was great. His beads were terrible, but thank God he had both, otherwise he wouldn't have survived. Yeah, it's funny. The the, the Zatman Aegis is usually what we call the the fruitless Aegis when you're yep. surrounded and you are certainly dead and you Aegis anyway. But oh, Zatman getting his revenge. Oh, Gina's in a bit of trouble in mid there. Now going to get stunned out and collapse, and I saw him getting caught in the jungle there. Andy. Predicting the sidestep and he dukes with the non juke. I don't know if that was even if he sidestepped that. I don't no, know. No, he didn't. He stayed, he stood still. No, no, I'm saying like Andy was so far off the mark there. Oh, okay. I don't think if two <laughs> buses could have got through that gap and still Sobek would have been fine. Well, Medium's gonna get dropped on, avoids the knockup, but only if he still gets the kill on the hunter out of Canada. Keep it on Shadow Andy. chair on the top end, still trying to deal with things. Not Gino in trouble, but the sprint is popped. Meanwhile, over the wall, Sam Fisaka will get away to live to fight and pick up Zatman too as Shadow chair falls back. Zatman just a little bit overextended there, didn't get the follow up from his team. And there's a good boulder. See? Defending buffs. Yeah, there you go. Gets the, uh, the confirmation on the red buff for Shadow Chair. Able to pick that one up. But look at this on the right. This is Gary D. This is what he sometimes does in the team fights, which I do like. He's not going to make it there in time. Sometimes it's a decision to stay in lane because you're like, well, what are we going to lose in that fight on the on the left-hand side? I'm winning Some lane. kills. Well, you, there's no goal for you up on the left. So even if he does rotate, what's he going to do? Fight? What could he do? He's Take winning objectives. lane. Yeah, but he's not winning it yet. <laughs> oh, the dash forward looking oh, for the flip. Not going to find it. Like, like I've the seen idea. the one-twos. The one-twos at Hercules are always fun because it's something that you don't use as often or see. Mm -hmm. But and when it, it happens, it looks great. Yeah, it, it is fun watching that one go down. Not, not able to find the, uh, the character, however, but still impressive nonetheless. Gino getting a little poke out here at 1730. Oh. And Space Station with the lead in our second game of a two-game set, 7-4. Also leading in the gold by about 4,000 gold. Still relatively an even game, though. Even though Space Station are ahead, they're not in the lead enough to say, yeah, this game is theirs. It's not in the bag yet. Like, it was at a certain point in game one. Round 25, 26, you're like, yeah, the game's broken with that fire giant, but still fine for that. Space Station Gaming's jungler uh -oh. picks up the Anchile. Uh -oh. Fine, okay. Eh, I don't, I, I'm not saying uh-oh just yet. The hammer connected, it may have been a bit more of an uh-oh, but he's got the bracer too, like, as you said, so... We'll see how this works out. And still no anti-heal just yet on nope. the side of Space Station. Hercules could be an absolute beast going forward. Love this choice of itemization coming out from Homie FA. The Anchile here recently changed, but the passive remains the passive remains the same. So when he gets hit by magic, he yep. silences the magicians around him, the mages around him. <laughs> but the stats are more form-fitted for 
It's basically dive the mage and make him shut up real quick, as opposed to this weird hybrid item that it used to be. Looking at Shadow Chair, and more specifically, the Rat of Tasker, he's going to jump on that mage, the mage is going to be silenced, and hopefully dead before he can cast. But it's funny, something funny we just saw at Jigs as well, who just came back from base. When he went back, he started working on Kasari, then sold it straight away before he left the base, switched it up. Now looks like he's going for that Pestilence, which is yep. something that I'm probably going to expect because he needs some sort of anti-heal, as you mentioned. And it's good to see that they're noticing it too, you know, even though natural brain path is Kasari next. Mm -hmm. Wait, 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 wait. I, can't, I would love this with the team I've got, but I can't really do that right now. Yeah, and he, he will get the Kasari a little bit later, and that'll help out Zapman and Scary D. And, you know, the, the idea, right, that Kernos is uh, not the super late game character, well, oh, if you pair him with Jigs and the Kasari, uh, well, I mean, he sees it now. He hears it, sure. Yeah, yeah. Good call, buddy. Good call. I don't know. Shadow Chair was very weak in mid lane there, so there was potential options. But Gino and Vedium were not. <laughs> this, however, is still a chance for Space Station to take this tower because Shadow Chair is so low, and Gino getting poked to half now. This could be an easy collapse for a tier one. Yeah, it's a big deal. Even with a nice sickening strike, Gino doesn't heal himself up very well. Sam for Soccer by himself in the back line. Oof. Oof, so scary. Okay. And now Gold Fury is just spawning. So just notice that Space Station Gaming got the first Gold Fury. Then just got a free tier one tower in the mid lane too. And now they can head towards the gold and put some pressure there. And Cryptic still haven't based yet. So Gino and Shadow Chair still not at full health. Timing 100% intentional. Good stuff. Coming out from Space Station Gaming. Oh, Making Zap. sure to look for this opportunity. Going all the way in onto Zapman. And Zapman going to age his perfectly. So that needs to will at least make sure Zapman is traded out. Jigs now and the rest of Space Station grouped together. The control by Hercules. Fantastic job kicking two players, finding the stun, confirming the kill onto Z-Man and the rest. Now one for one, as you said, four players alive. Neither team can really afford to go and try and invest in the gold theory. Gino coming around the corner to make sure Space Station aren't going to catch them sleeping a second time. The problem right now, though, is Sam Fasaka keeps trading his life every time. He gets a kill. Every time he's committing, but you can see he's got two assists, two kills, four deaths. Yeah. Add them all together, four for four, right? Yeah. He's dying every time he goes in. He can't be doing that. He's got to either commit earlier and get back out or don't commit in the first place. Don't trade your life every single time. It's not going to be so beneficial as time goes on to not have your jungler on the map. That's why the, the experience disparity is also starting to show. At the same time, I mean, that's... that's that's what Sir Cat does. She jumps on somebody and everybody just throws darts at her. But you're Sir Cat, and generally by that point you should be looking to disengage. Yeah. He's using all his abilities to commit most of the time, which means if you're using everything to commit, how the hell are you getting back out? Exactly. And if you're going to use all your Trouble. abilities to commit, no issue. Get a freaking Aegis then, though. Yeah. Don't go blink. Because uh, why do you need blink and ambush and death rain if you're going to be going all in? You well, well that, that's the thing. The blink is supposed to allow you to go all in. You blink, you find the Cobra's Kiss and the zigzag, and then you ambush the hell out when, you get, when you get the kill. But if you're going to go blink and wind up dying for going all in, that creates a troublesome situation where you're not getting all the bang for your buck. With this, the next goal for you, quite key. We mentioned the first one earlier on, like just like game one. This goal for you is key again because Cryptic take this goal for you. We're looking at an even game once more. Experience-wise, not so much. Gold-wise, definitely. Yeah, and that's uh, what these teams really have to worry about as the game gets it later and later is, is that gold lead for Team Cryptic specifically. We reference the experience, and most of the time that number is a little bit more important, but Cryptic is keeping it uh, relatively even with uh, level 19 Scotty versus the enemy Hunter. Things are looking kind of okay there outside of the jungle. It's Gino, the gold they got to worry about. A couple of mistakes from Gino there, but the turnaround is that because Zap got hungry. Kill eyes on, and mm. in the end, it's him that drops down his dead. Homie in the sky, though, and Andy under pressure, too. And he He's going to be fallen victim to Venium's hand as well. Three kills for the Hunter. And Team Cryptic looking to turn this around. That's so funny. Gino, Gino made a mistake by going all in and homie FA for some free poke and, you know, just cause some problems for the rat. Gets caught out of position like, oh, no, I've got an ult. And then the whole space agents start coming in to try and kill him and don't realize that Cryptic were all around waiting <laughs> in the wings. Gold Fury going to go down. Beautiful zonage coming out from Final K one more time. And that Gold Fury is a very big deal. That's what we were just saying. Yeah. What was once a 5,000 gold lead cut down, and it's about 2K now. They're looking at Paul Demon here potentially too. Final K is going to pull it. The whole of Cryptic going over there, and Space Station know this is going on because Homie FA notices it as well, but he's going to go for the red buff which leaves only Scarity and Jigs here to try and defend this one. And already at 10%, I don't think defense is even on their mind. Final K again, just zoning, no problem. 0-1-5 oh, for the zoner, and the, the excuse me, portal guy goes down, and Team Cryptic trailing by 
2000 ish. Yep. Close this is where you want to be. Well, also, taking into account that tier one tower mids down for Space Station 2, which means they've got a little bit more bonus gold from that tower. So if Cryptic find a tower back, we are definitely at a gold even game for now. But Space Station, once again, like inconsistencies in the team fight. Sometimes they look absolutely amazing, and other times you're like, ooh, that didn't look as clean as it should have been. For me, it's about the star here. I mean, sometimes they catch you by surprise, but really, uh, it's it's their ability to really, if they get the start of the fight, if Gino's allowed to, like, say, all right, team, we're ready, hike, then they win the team fight. But if Space Station jumps on them, all of a sudden, they are just, they look a little lost. Well, let's see what happens next in this one, because with the Paul Demon being down, it's only Fire Giant still up and available to be taken, but there's nothing much to really do. You didn't catch me before. I wasn't. Playing. It said ca catch you by surprise. You said hungry eyes in the middle lane for some reason. Oh, so you were rhyming the Eric with Carmen me. song? Oh, I wasn't intentionally doing that. Really? He's got hungry eyes. I have did. never heard the phrase hungry eyes outside of hungry eyes. To be fair, that's the eyes that Zapman had. I would call them Kill Bill eyes, too, because it's the same sort of thing. You know when the Kill Bill music plays? Of the Wee! Yeah, that's Wee! what Zap had. Da, 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 da. That was Zap. He's like, he saw the kill, and he went for it, and he got him killed. Just sees all red? Yeah, he just glows red. He's like, death. That's happen. Zapman from season zero to season four. But at that moment, that's exactly what happened, too. Just the regression into the pure fight? Yep. But that's, that's the thing, is that... We have all generally agreed that Zapman's sort of uh, the reeling in of Zapman's. Oh, good pluck. Ooh, Love can it. He get out of this one. He's got no support either. This is death. I don't know. The ultimate comes out. The Aegis is there. Good luck. He's trying to back to pace. I mean, he's backing because he knows he's got nothing else he can yeah, do. Yeah, nothing, nothing he can do there. That was clean. And that is why we call it the Zapman Aegis. Just want to notice that was Gino as well. Again, we've been mentioning how well he's been playing. That blink pluck was absolutely well-timed. Looking like a music. Picked him off straight away. No beads out of Zapman that time. I'm not sure if the beads were on cooldown still, or he just didn't get time to cast them because he didn't realize the, re the reaction time just wasn't nah, he was No, he was smart about it there. Uh, he, he used the Aegis. Uh, Zapman slams the Aegis, right? And he goes, oh no, I'm in trouble. Aegis. And then he realizes he's dead anyway, and he's oh, not going to beat. Blink from Sam, beads down from Sam. So two relics to get stunned in the face is what happened. But it did create a bit of pressure for Cryptid to look at a second tier one tower. Sam for soccer trades two relics out for a tier one tower. I like it. I'm fine with it. I'm okay with Tie it. Tie game. I'm okay with it. He ties the game. <laughs> I mean, just walk up to him. Like, all right, all right. 1,300 gold in 26 minutes. That's a Thank tie game to me. Yeah, yeah, it is. It, it pretty <laughs> much is, even though the cameraman doesn't agree. <laughs> but that's that's exactly what Sam has been doing over and over again. And yeah. we've been, you know, even though that was for a tower this time around, he's full committing with everything. And, and, then. and, and you want to know what? We've been kind of critical about him and his number and, and his slash line specifically. But at the end of the day, you know, he's, he's not bringing necessarily all of the damage. You can see him basically just below midline there. But... He's created the opportunities. Sure. And I'm not I'm not trying to describe they're, like they're they're dirty line. and messy. It's more the idea of his play in this game with a circuit. You, you always want a jungler on base value. You, you don't you want your jungler going one for one every team fight, do you? No. You want your jungler going two for one at best or one for zero if you just sure. a real dream. I mean he's 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 trying and I'm not saying oh he's trying, look at him. <laughs> but he's he's getting it done just sure. sloppy. It's like somebody gave him like a, a, a color by numbers, but he only has two colors. But at the end of the day, you can still tell what the hell the picture is. That's what he's doing, basically. It's really funny. I'm just looking at builds now from the Haunters, too. Keep an eye on Zapman. He has died six times this game, yet his build is online. He is a crit machine coming out very, very soon. And that's one thing that Cryptic have to be a little bit wary of, is that they don't realize how much crit he's going to do, because two crits in a row, and it's good night, sweet, whatever you are, except fine, okay. And that's the and th that's what I was talking about when it comes to Space Station. Late game, put the cape on Zapman and Andy. It doesn't matter. I mean, it Andy's had the cape on all day so far, <laughs> in my opinion. I mean, a Andy straight up won two games for them last sure. week. Uh, there, was a period, there was a moment where they were over by the left side, uh, blue buff, and Andy kills three people with a raw ult, and they win the game. And then the very next game, they're over by the fire giant, he kills three people with, I think it was Raijin, and they win the game. You, you mentioned <laughs> the cape that Zapman wants. I'm pretty sure there's one cape on that team between Andy and Zap. They just and, toss it And Zap's like, hey, Andy, can I have that cape? And Andy's like, no. Because I'm going to die no. with it mid lane. No, oh, Shadow fine. Chair, shoot him in the face! But now Zap's got the cape for a second as the Gold Fury's pulled again. Remember, last Gold Fury went to Cryptic 2 and the Portal Demon. Now a 4v5, no magical damage dealer. The Securer of a Gold Fury is not available either. This is free. Look at Final K. Zapman throws out the uh, the, the thorns, and Final K is just sitting in them. Like, what up? 
That's doing nothing. Didn't use a single relic for that either. Just nope. to say, like, okay, no problem. What up? Cryptic could go for Portal Demon again here, and I'd like to see them do that. They've still got Andy dead for 25 seconds, and the way Space Station just acted around the Gold Fury, Portal Demon, in my eyes, is worth less in gold, less in experience. So if they're not going to defend the gold, they're not going to defend this, and Zappy's on the wild ride. Yeah, he's just getting fine okay over here. Gino from around the back end might be able to help out his solo later, but nobody's helping Zap Man here. Shoved. The Aegis will help for the moment, but the like dash kick by Fido K, okay. number 10. Fire Giant potentially now could be looked at with Zap being dead 55 seconds this ah, time. they got to be careful about that. But ultimates are down. That's the only issue. So maybe pull him safer, then come back to the fight again. Use a 4v5. Scary D can't contest this. Just make sure he can't get in range for a pin, and that's why Gino is zoning him away. Um, back and fire, I'd look at. Or at least a fight around fire. Do you, do you, do you hear that coming over the loudspeaker? I hear, I hear a paging. For Mr. Homie Efe, he's been missing for 15 minutes. I mean, you say that, but he's 5-1-2 and two at level 20. I and he got all those much. in the first 15, 20 minutes. Where has he been for the last 10 minutes? He's a Ratatasker with a half-global ultimate that wasn't used when the enemy was looking at both objectives. Finally, he's in the sky looking for something, and it's used defensively. Mm -hmm. Homie Efe had a fantastic start to this game and has been quiet ever since. But we saw game one as well. We said that about him, too. He's transitioning his role on this team. He's not the assassin get in and carry. He's more of get him through the early game and then be a supportive jungler throughout the rest. But he ain't supporting anybody here in the late game. We didn't see anything. I, I, I feel like he fell off. Fair, because realistically, Space Age just keeps getting picked apart before the fights even happen. Betium in a bit of trouble there, thanks to Jigs. Nice little hammer timing more than anything else to make sure the knock-up from the Fire Giant made an impact. I'm really keeping an eye on Betium in the team fight to see how well this build goes for him. Jigs is going to pop up at the transformation, oh, and he's the subject. Jumps over the wall. He has that cryptic poison on him. He's going to fall down and make sure not to hit anybody else. And that's a really important play there. Sam for soccer oh, getting the kill. On Zatman and Zatman, remember, he has no relics. He used them last time round. Nice Sammy. driving strike from Fine OK. And it's two the way of Cryptic. Andy, Andy, Andy he shoots a laser beam okay. into Sammy. What can he do for Homie FA? Just he's shooting up basics. Everything's on cooldown. Fine OK and friends are going to knock around Scary D. But, I mean, that's a, that's a solo laner. What are you going to do to Scary D? So they're just going to walk away here. Fine, okay. This is where he plays this entire game. Uh, all of these all of these entrances to the lanes, yep. Fine, okay has just been standing there going, you shall not pass. Pretty much, and that's all he's going to do. And the moment they walk too far forward, he's like, driving strike into your face. Guys, collapsing it now. And they, they did that to Zap just then. And Zap yeah. didn't get out of position there. He was pulled out of position by the yes. Earthbreaker yeah. into the driving strike that got him killed when he had no relics. Yeah, Fine, okay looks really strong. I, and this is... Uh, I want to say, Homie FA's timing on that dash versus pluck has been perfect every <laughs> single time so far. Every time you see Gino go for a dash, he's like, don't be silly. And now maybe homie makes the impact that you were looking for. Yes, he goes in the sky. I'm clapping because this is going to keep Space Station competitive timing. if he's able to Great go ahead timing. and steal it. Great timing. The pool on the floor just spawned when he came down. The pin over the wall as well from Scary D. Nice play. He's, at he's just removed. Final K going to look to handle these two players. Fire Giant completely leashed. Homie FA taken care of by Shadow Chair, who has had his own questionable game across the way. It's one of those things we don't talk about these days about the Fire Giant, but the timing of engaging on teams of the Fire Giant is all about where the knockups are coming and the pulls. And, and it's their sweet dreams. And the rest Aegis, of the team fight. Aegis, Aegis, Sam Aegis. Sam Soccer just trying to get out of there, yeah. but he's not going to. Oh, he's definitely going to die at the end of the this. Dash. No, he will have Deathbane and our final kill. Ah. He's going to get Zatman in trouble. He's up against Geno too, but in a minion wave and Shadow Chair collapsing. We're currently in a 3v3. Only Zap is low. Final K going to... Scoot around. Run, buddy, run. Find the find the Zap Man. <laughs> one basic, one basic into the Hercules. Shield of and the Zap Man. Shield of Regrowth. Remember how much we saw that before? Well, yes. Hercules loves the item because Zoom it's got go faster boots. He's still gonna sprint too if you ever wanted that. Too. I, I, I love the idea from Zap Man. He turns around and he tosses a basic into him and he goes, "That did nothing to Hercules." Oh Tickled. well. Tickled. It's like. You, you like hit the you, you hit Goliath with the sword that breaks in half and you just go, well, and you just turn around and run. It's funny with this being week four, the final, the, the penultimate week, I should say, and only a couple of games left for all the teams. This team of Cryptic, if they would have started this season as a team in the yeah. Pro League, I think this is a definitely a different story. Probably four for fifth with how things are looking. Um, maybe even creeping towards the top three where Space Station Gaming are. I don't know is, about that one. This is looking like a split to me, honestly. And if Space Station Gaming are 10 points, five points clear of anybody else, that tells me Cryptic are up there. Space Station Gaming has also been, unfortunately, a little bit disappointing 
in Still third, Tom. Still third. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. I'll, I'll give it to you. Fire Giant has to be leashed up here by Team Cryptic, and they all pile on the Scaredy and Jigs. It's a tanky solo lane, but when it's four on one, thorns. the Thorns might not even help. Shadow Chair over the wall, but Scary D's still alive. Jumped on top of the Assassin, and it's the Assassin that gets it done. You can see Andy was just trying to hover around the right-hand side of the speed buff there, looking for potential damage over the wall, find the stun, the ultimate, the big setup. Just wasn't available. Fire Giant started, and Gino, and zone. That was my problem for Scary D on Luminosity Gaming, however, is that some Sometimes he goes a little bit too deep at the worst of times. His decision making can be brought up, can be questionable, and if Team Cryptic are able to Gotta get the Fire in. Giant, it's because of the lack of the front end pressure. Oh, Shadow Andinsta. Chair goes down, taking somebody with him. Andinsta, Andinsta, Andinsta is making so many plays, but he's got no relics, and Sam will just be able to give a basic off too. And it was Zatman twice. No relics. Gets pulled by Fine OK. Then manages to dash away. And then gets followed up by Gino with the pluck. And that's what made the fight. As soon as the solo laner falls down, there's no one to play goalie. I pointed out Fine OK, but Scary D was doing it in game number one, zoning the opposition out. They take out the solo laner. The rest of the team can do whatever the hell they want. Yep. And Fire Giant is, is the result of the ensuing two kills. Team Cryptic up 5k, plus a Fire Giant, seven kills as well. Going for the Portal Demon, all off of the back of a kill onto the solo laner. And I'll tell you now, if Anderson did not kill Vetium there at the end of that team fight, because it was all him individually that managed to pretty much pick up Vetium yeah. in the end, if he does not kill Vetium there, this game is done. Space Station still have a lifeline in the fact that the carry Vetium on playing Scar sorry, playing Ascardi, obviously with the penetration build, mm -hmm. he would shred the towers a lot more so with that Fire Giant buff. Doesn't have as much regen now because no Fire Giant for him either. That is a very, very small win for Space Station that they need to cling to now on defense. I want to give Venium a lot of credit here. When we talk about builds a lot of the time, it's usually just right or wrong. <laughs> Venium comes through with a really interesting build. It's actually public opinion more often than not with right or wrong yeah. because everyone has like different views in it all the time. You, sometimes, but basically we usually see right or wrong. Sure. When we look at this Hunter build... If he I, wins, it's right. If he loses, it's wrong. Well, no, even if he loses, I like it because the 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 swap of the items here, the Breastplate of Valor is new. That used to be a Gladiator shield. Scotty is a very ability-based hunter. Lifesteal when you're basic attacking versus getting f healing versus healing when you're using abilities. If you're going to be using abilities most of the time, it's going to wind up being a wash. I didn't do the numbers. I don't have the calculator in my pocket, but I think that winds up being effective. I was watching him through the team fights. He was able to heal up off of all of the abilities. Permafrost is one and his doggo. Now, now, late game, he builds the stupid expensive item that is the Blood Forge, able to trade that out for the Breastplate of Valor because he has lifesteal, no longer needs the healing from the Gladiator Shield, gets 20% CDR and a big don't look at me button for all the physical players. This is an intelligent build. I love how it goes from the mid game because the item is cheaper, 1700 or just a little bit above 1700. Yep. I love everything about this build. I I'm personally gushing. though, I know you love the build. I may have looked at shifters over the Breastplate for the simple fact in the team fights, you're taking magical damage too. Shifters gives you some magical, some physical. I think Shifters is the more aggressive version. There you go. And to be fair with the build he's got, he could have gone either way. Breastplate is f fully a defense. He line. heard you. He heard you. The Did Breastplate's he? being sold for a Magi's blessing. God, that's a, that's <laughs> if he a wound throwback. up with the Shifter shield, that's that a was throwback. So basically, a full defensive item. Now, obviously, the meta this year has started to shift to see more defensive items coming on carries. Sure. One mainly being Hide of the Urchin, but. One one defensive item, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. that was like going all the way back to season one. Magi's Blessing was the one that all the carries used to get for defense. It's just that one just to give them that, you know, extra bit of CC safety and make sure they could absorb one CC and be able to get away again. Seeing it come back again, I'm okay with it. What's he getting CC'd by that really demands the Magi's? Stuff from Toth. It's some from Toph as well as mixed of maybe Home AF getting the stun of the knockup from his ultimate. And then you've also got the ultimate coming out from Zapman 2 over the walls. Most of the stuff it's over the walls that he can't see he's having issues with. And that's where he's dying too. One of the nice things that I do like about the pickup is not my favorite. I actually liked the breastplate and maybe even would have liked the shifters. I don't hate this, and I think the reason I'm warming up to this, all right, I like this, is because all... <laughs> that was a really quick warm-up. Well, you know, the, the, the thinking out loud with Tom Battinger. Um, all of the um, all of the impact of the CC from Space Station is high impact. You're not going to get Athena Toth or knocked up by Geb and just get the bubble shredded. Team Cryptic looking to shred this left side Phoenix. Dash out by not Gino. Space Station responding. Homie's still not gone to the sky just 
Yeah, Big ultimate, ultimate out of ultimate. Andy. But he's only going to hit his Shadow Chair and Gino. Gino gets taunted back in, which is good. Gino will fall down. Now Zap gets created. Now Homie goes up. And he's going to land right in front of Vetti. And that Magi's Blessing protected him from the knockup. But it's not going to protect him from the dash. Homie FA puts him in the ground with the rest of the acorns. Final K heals. Final K dashes. Scary D on the heels of Final K. And Final K still being able to tank all of this nonsense. Has Bracer available should the burst damage come out. Three man kick coming out for the Hercules. There's another heal from the Bracer. There's another Don't heal from the regen. Him. But it's not. Oh my god, the poisons! Are they going to continue to spread? Homie FA's in trouble. Driving strike. Poison spreads again. Andy has the ages. Final K is just on his own, beating him down. And there we go. The turnaround is there. Sir Ket to the rescue. We caught out Sam for soccer a couple of times in these fights for trading his life. He hung around. And Final K is just the unstoppable Hercules man. Machine. Heal the Hercules. Heal, heal the Hercules <laughs> over and over again. Holy whether holy. it be ability, whether it be the, sh oh, the Shadow Bracer. Chair. Turn Shadow back, chair. turn back, turn back. Go towards Final K. Let him peel for Dash. you. And he will peel for you. Now Final K is going to keep being down. Scary D. Shadow Chair, just run. Don't stay around for now. Final K will be okay. He's looking at Scary for some more. Driving strike, but he only hits Jigs. He needed to hit Scary D. The one versus two. There's a nice heal. Up. The taunt coming through. Shadow, Shadow Chair needs to back. turn around. One hit, two hit. The oh, heal. but there's a heal from the ultimate coming the up. The burn, Scary D. the burn. Disapparate to the rescue. Hell's escape again. Couple the of final basics. K. Couple Looking of basics. One. Needs another one. Gets the driving strike. However, it's fun in games, and it looks cool as hell. But nothing actually happened in that fight other than Space Station defended their base. Sure, Final K just wound up on everybody's highlight reel. Gives a couple of taunts and laughs as he takes the 2v1. 2v, I guess, 1.5 versus 2. Um, I'd, I'd probably say that was a 1v4 for quite a while. Yes. Then it became a 2v4 for a few moments. Then it became a 2v3 for a few moments. Then it became a 1v4 <laughs> for a few moments. And then Shadow Chair and him danced around. But. And here's the deal. Like, sure, we're saying, well, nothing really happened there. No, Fido K controlled two players while his teammates wait. Well, he basically wasted the time of the respawn time for his team's but abilities. By too, that yeah. time, by the time the entire you know, whatever the hell just happened on the left side of the map is over, Team Cryptic are awake, getting out of bed, drinking their coffee, and taking out the fire giant. Taking into account as well, that was Team Cryptic with the tail end of their fire giant pushing the Phoenix, mm -hmm. right? So that team fight was defended by Space Station to begin Which with, which was the great Phoenix. defense, huge. But then Final K comes up big by just hanging on as long as he can. Final K. He allows his cryptic teammates to get back in position, potentially, and then get their abilities in the right sort of lineup to be able to come in. Sam Fasaka trades his life for three there. And that was a great trade because he just allowed Final K to continue. And I was when he first went back in, I'm like, just leave Final K. Just let him die. <laughs> but I'm like, okay, maybe that was definitely the wrong call. Final K just sat there and 2v1 his old teammate and his replacement. Hey, that is the sweetest justice I've ever seen. How much anti-heal do you reckon Space Station has? Not enough. One item. <laughs> One item. Not enough. And I bet they're regretting it now. I'll tell you that here, because now Team Cryptic looking to split. Fine, okay, can Flip. take for days, and he's going to pull one in. Scary he just gets away from the driving strike in time. But Sam Fasakri, a lot more poke than he wanted to. He's got to be careful of Andy. They've got to play around Andy in this range, because he'll use it so well. And Andy, Andy hiding behind this wall right here on the right side of the Phoenix, while the rest of everybody is able to clear up the wave easy peasy. Jake's going to get permafrosted oh. and pulled. Not kicked. Final K uses the Bracer early on. 118 on that cooldown. That was a good little play from Space Station there to be able to hold onto the Bracer a little bit more. So over the wall, Sam gets hit again. This is the issue. Sam's just eating another poke from Andy. And he, he, gets gets kill. Free. he gets the for kill. He gets the kill onto the jungler. Andy, now they're going to push forward. The sprint has popped as Team Cryptic look to get the hell out of there. Space Station Gaming again with a fantastic boulder, boulder. stop, but a great ultimate. Oh. Final K still in the spotlight. And Shadow Check got a big ultimate off across the whole team, forcing Jigs Norton. Scary D is now trying to fight him down too. Final K, me on the front side, goes, hey guys, anybody want to keep playing? No? Come back, Jix. I miss you, buddy. You will be missed now as Cryptic. And now in a 4v. Four. One man army. Final K up close and personal. Ooh. There's the kill for the Hercules himself. Doesn't even need the team to put him down. Scary D in trouble. Scary D put all the way down. Again, the Dubliun. Final K, this is his game. He's getting revenge. Team Cryptic forcing the split off of the back of Fine OK. Hey, Erlang Shen. Woof. He was OP, right? Oh my goodness. Love him. Owed him. He was OP, right? Final K again! Did nothing. Hercules has done nothing all year. Not been spoken about and then just walks in this game and goes, Are you going to kill me? 
Nope, you forgot about anti heal. Okay. People, people ask me why I have such a high value of this solo laner. That's why. Prime example. Look at him. Prime example. To be fair to LG, let's go back, because LG have always been very good at crafting solo laners <laughs> and finding the ones out of the rough. I mean, Baskin came out of nowhere realistically, Final K2. Now we'll see what Aquarius can do, but Final K, that game, just, amazing. That that game right there, I almost said it during the broadcast, and I didn't, because I, I thought I was gassing him up too much. I think it was a crime that Final K got, he got put off a team, whatever, that's business. Watching him sh hang out in the challenger scene when he plays like that, mm -hmm. that's a crime. I think we should be able to watch that play every week. I love the fact, really, Final K can just sit there with a nice little smile on his face knowing <laughs> that he won that game for his team and oh, yeah. he was on the team he was against yep. just recently. He, like I said, he 2v1 his old teammate and his replacement. Like That's, that's the sweetest justice Crazy. I've ever seen. Amazing game. It was great <laughs> to watch too. But a split too. So Cryptic climb a point on the board. They, I'm pretty sure they're at joint seventh right now, but there's still mm. games to play. And Space Station Gaming will stay where they are for the time and in third. Fantastic stuff here. Going to wind up as a split. Both teams wind up with a win. Three more games continuing. North American SPL. We'll be right back.